Hi everyone, my name is Atharva Nanche and welcome to Red Fox Security Channel. Whether you are starting in cyber security or looking to level up or just curious about cyber security, you are at the right place. At Red Fox, we prioritize hands-on learning with 70% practical, 30% theory, ensuring you gain real-world skills. Our team has worked on hundreds of real-world engagements. We offer pen testing services across various domains of cyber security and provide courses and training at academy.redfoxsec.com. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn for more insights. So getting to today's discussion, we are going to talk about Drozer tool and how we can exploit Android services using Drozer. Uh, but yes, before that, if you haven't uh, checked my first initial video about Drozer where I have told how we can configure it and how we can map the attack surface, don't miss to check that out first. Uh, your basics will be cleared and then you can move to the exploitation part. And if you have did that, then let's get to the slides. So, uh, as I said, uh, this will be uh, uh, not an introductory part. In this, we will be discussing about uh, how we can exploit uh, Android services using this Drozer tool. So before exploitation, we need to understand what are the services in Android and uh, how they work. So let's go ahead. So what is services? So uh, services in Android is like a hidden worker that runs in background to do tasks like playing music, fetching data from internet, sending notifications, even when you are not using the app itself. So uh, whenever uh, uh, there are some of the activities which are going in background in the application, and you are not uh, like having a communication with the application and still it is happening in the background there there where the service takes place uh, there are three main types of services that is a foreground service background service and bound service so what is a foreground service so uh, let's suppose you have an application uh, which requires audio and music and kind of uh, uh, notification things so whenever you are trying to turn on a uh, what you can say you want to listen to some good songs uh, you got to spotify or any any other application you turn on the music you started listening to the songs so at that time you get a notification at the top of your app uh, in your device so that is where the foreground service takes place then uh, we move ahead with the background service so background service is something like uh, uh, if you if your application has an update and it, it asks you to do you want to update the application you press yes and then uh, it checks if the if your device has an internet connection or not if your device does not have an internet connection it might give you a message saying that uh, the update might be take uh, uh, it requires internet connection or it will update once you have a connected to internet these kind of messages you will get and once your device is connected to an internet it will your application will listen with the uh, what you can say the receivers uh, the broadcast receivers and once you, the application have uh, seen that the Wi-Fi options or the internet is open then it starts to upgrade in the background without any kind of user interaction this is the background service then moving ahead to the bound service which today's our target is as well uh, allows other uh, components like activity to connect and interact with service so let's suppose uh, there is a uh, what you can say uh, file uh, viewing functionality in your application where you can uh, download or you can view some of the details of the file so in these cases the activity when you are pressing the uh, any kind of input you are doing activity on that uh, particular application and it is showing you the contents itself so at that moment the bond service comes into picture which has a communication of the activity and the services so this was all about what are the services in Android application. So how we can identify if these services are exploitable or not. Similarly, uh, for the identification, we have two steps or you can say two methods that is using JDEX and second is using the browser itself. So let me show you how we can uh, check if the services are exploitable via JDEX. So I go to this tab. So this is my DVAC, that is a vulnerable application. And this is my JDEX UI. So I'll just open JDEX. Yeah. So let's drag and drop it in JDEX. 
once it is decompiled we will be navigating uh, so it is decompiled uh, we will be navigating to android manifest file and now over here as we did earlier we need to search for exported components too exported let's see for let's go ahead uh, so exported true there you go but it is an activity then we have a provider receiver and yeah here you go with these services so android services like password exported service it's uh exportable is true uh, means uh the service uh i don't think so it will require any kind of permission it uh, the permissions are also not set properly uh then mm, okay fine we have got this okay true yes so is there any other service right now yeah yeah there is another service as well which is explore uh, exported true that is password socket service so there are two services which are exported true uh, which does not require an authentication itself we can communicate with these services from the external method as well so this is how we have identified if the services are exported now let's identify uh, the vulnerabilities itself by using browser so uh, for that i will go yeah program files blocks bin then go with the key and the command so uh let's first open the nox emulator where we have already installed our uh, browser agent and a vulnerable application that is nox yeah so this will just hmm. So this is our uh, DVAC vulnerable application and this is our agent browser which we can use to connect with this device. So let's first connect with the device uh, that is ADB devices to check which of the devices are live. So our Nox is running on 62001. So now as we did we need to forward the port but before that we need to turn on the agent itself. So yes it is off right now embedded server make it on uh, so it's listening on 31415 so we need to fo forward the port db uh, forward e colon 31415 then tcp colon 31415 there you go so we have forwarded the port now let's try to connect with the console of browser was it and so connect yeah so we have connected yeah it's fine it's working fine we have connected to the browser console itself so now let's identify the uh, vulnerable services for that we will first uh run uh, app dot package dot attack surface and here if any i don't think so argument is required uh, we will get the package name from android manifest file so let's go up here you can see the package name itself just copy this package name drop here enter so as you can see uh, there are two services which we have enumerated via the uh what again jdx uh, are exported and which are is also debuggable so we will check with them so run app dot service dot packet uh, service dot info now i think that's an argument Let's give the package name itself. Enter. So yeah, these are the two services. That was socket service, password socket service, and uh, password exported service, which uh, uh, which have no permissions. And as they have no permissions itself, means we are able to communicate them out outside the application and exploit them as well. 
so socket service is not the one which i was looking for but the exported service so what exactly it is let's go into the application and understand what is that password export export services so yes so let's first authenticate uh yeah you're logged in uh now uh as you can see i have already uh inserted a, a new password you can do that again let's do it delete this password i have deleted it we can add a new password right now and even hacker uh anything like um Add the red one, two, three, four, five, and then it is. Secure. Add it. So we have uh, added a new password itself, as you can see over here. So if I want to extract this, there is a functionality given in this application, uh, which in the real world you might well, you won't found like something like this. But as it is a vulnerable application, uh. it has with uh, it has been stored over here that is fetch xml if i click on this uh, button uh, whatever data i have input we can just see it into the xml format uh, whatever data description anything secure regarding things have been fetched over here so this is a kind of sensitive data which uh, is uh, which can be retrieved for the legit user by just clicking on fetch xml in case if he has mismatched or i guess he forgot the password itself so that's the reason why they db have been uh, set like retrieving their password itself so what if uh, such and uh, uh, if an external attacker is able to exploit it and get the data so that's our goal for today uh we will try to extract this data without even being authenticated and by just uh clicking on this and fetching the data so let's do it so let's first logged out let's confirm yes we are logged out now let's go to our browser back now for that uh uh target will be about the password exported service so let's move ahead and run uh app so i'll i'll have a uh, this app service info if and i want to complete information about these packages so yes as you can see uh, null uh, there is no permission here and yeah we also got an action uh, intent filters there is an action which is going on uh, which we are trying to when we are pressing on the xml uh, button and then there it is extracting the data so this is the particular action which we are talking about so uh, to understand more about this functionality we need to go with the jdex gui and understand the dex format what it is looking for so let's go with exported uh, let's go with this how do you say service i will go with service search for and then word as you can see the exported service already here uh, just double click on it to get to the dex file so yes we are into uh, the classes right now where we can understand the passport exported service so what we are uh, what we are looking for is like how the password is exported or how it is uh, how the server is responding or the, how the db is responding to it so is there any kind of response for it? This particular password field. Okay, so it is handling like this. Fine. Looks good to me. Handle message. Okay. Exported passwords. Okay, it's exporting password. How it is exported? There is another uh, class. Private. uh okay then the message to message reply to so whatever whenever the application whenever the legit user is trying to extract the file it is going through the export passwords then if you look closely 
the string XML data XML exporter. Yes, this helper password export services sends response message. Okay, the response message is here. We can fetch the response message if uh, the intent filter is like 100 XML data to reply. Okay, then there is okay. So we will require the command uh, or you can say the first filter that is the one which is for the command then there are two arguments which can be any random integer so yes we will try okay so let's try to exploit it when we have this uh, particular format we can try to extract the data so how we can do this uh, so there is a command in browser where we can send the services let's do it run app dot service dot send uh, now I feel I will require an action and let's see with the without actions I guess it will happen let's see uh, then we will require a package name first. See if it works, or else we need to go with the action part. Then the uh, component which we are targeting that is the export services. Copy this, paste it here. Then goes with the message what we are trying, like our uh, server is trying to respond with a message. So the message which we are trying to retrieve is one then zero then zero if it works properly then uh, the data the particular data which is uh, inserted by the legit user can be retrieved or we need to check yeah there you go as you can see what happened in this command the services sent uh, to this particular application saying the message if it is having this uh, response code then retrieve me the message what is whatever the data it can be having so uh, got a reply from particular application with all the data with the password if there is any secure description string anything which has been used has been retrieved without even having an authentication or authorization to do this so uh, this was all about the exploitation part uh, this was all about the exploitation part how we can exploit uh, android services but uh, when it comes about the penetration testing we just don't need to exploit uh, what you can say exploit the uh, application but we need also need to know the prevention as well to communicate with the developers so the main uh, prevention for any ipc related issues for an android application could be either you can straight uh, set the exported false if it is not required at all kindly check with that and then uh, just uh, export it as false and if the your services or any other components in your android applications must be having an exported services that might be listening to another service in the application in the device itself then make sure then you have a appropriate custom permissions for that if you don't have a permission and uh, any other application can communicate with it then it will be retrieving data. So that was all about the uh, exploitation for services. Hi everyone, hope you have enjoyed this session. So at Red Fox Academy, we don't just teach, we prepare you for the real world uh, with hands-on learning and insights from the experienced professionals. Want to land a high paying salary at Big Four Company? Start building the right skills today at Red Fox Security. Explore your courses at academy.redfoxsec.com. Unlock the potential, share this video with your friends and let us know in the comments if there are any specific topic you want us to cover in our next videos. If you love our content, hit the subscribe button. Your cybersecurity journey starts here. Let's learn with Red Fox Security. Thank you.